In the newest season of iRacing, we are finally given two brand new TCR cars to join the Audi RS3, which had been all by itself since its release in the 2019 Season 4 build. This is a big deal for the category known in the real world of motorsports as an excellent series for manufacturer rivalry and development. So to have had only one TCR car for so long has undoubtedly hurt the category's popularity on iRacing. These new additions to the lineup may be needed to bring these front wheel drive touring car beasts back to competitive popularity levels. But with every series that features multiple manufacturers, a dirty acronym gets thrown around that threatens to throw the form guide out of the window at every season's update. I'm of course talking about the infamous balance of performance or BOP. Usually when I do these videos, I like to first explain the concept behind my tests but knowing you guys are excited to get into the results, what I've done instead is attached a pinned comment down below with all the testing methodology explained for those interested in how I got to these numbers. To mix up the usual order of these videos, we will start with the meat of the video, the lap time challenge at Barber Motorsports Park. This track has become my regular testing ground with its heavy emphasis on cornering at low and medium speed corners two heavy traction zones that lead onto long straights, and curbs that are of necessity to go fast. First up, we will set our baseline lap time for the season with the returning favourite, the Audi RS3 TCR. This car has had a pretty big overhaul itself in this season's update, so it feels like a new car with tyre compound changes, aerodynamic mapping getting updated, and irising even going as far as to change the vehicle weight and centre of gravity too. The initial impression of this car was that the steering feel of the car felt much heavier than previously, but overall a bit more refined and nimble than my previous experiences. Across the line, the Audi would set a 1 minute 31.3. Whether that is fast or not, we will only know once the next car takes the track. And next up was the Hyundai Elantra N, and first and foremost, how good does this car look? The Hyundai feels more connected to the road than the Audi and feels significantly better in the medium speed corners as it set a purple sector one time, but did lose out in sector 2 compared to the Audi which mostly came in the braking zone. Sector 3 would be another purple sector for the Korean manufacturer, but ultimately across the finish line it was the Audi fractionally in front, just half a tenth separating the two across the finish. An excellent first impression for the balanced performance. The last of the cars to take to Barber Motorsports Park was the Honda Civic Type R. This car does require a much smoother touch on the steering wheel to extract speed out of the car, but it's the raw braking performance and initial traction out of the corners that makes this car fantastic to drive. And it would be my favourite TCR car of them all if it wasn't for one glaring issue. When you touch a curb in this car, it decides that it would much rather have a career in being a flippin' jumping castle. It is terrible on the curbs and may be the worst car I've driven on iRacing in this regard. Despite matching the Hyundai in the first half of the lap and only just losing out to the Audi in Sector 2, it's the final two sectors of the lap where to go fast here at Barber, you need to be all over the curbs. That is what kills it for the Honda. It's very inconsistent and would be a tough ask to hold on to over race distance around here. And it's for that very reason that this car would finish slowest of the three cars by two tenths of a second. It wasn't all bad news for the Honda though as our second test was the top speed run at iRacing Super Speedway. The Honda would set the benchmark at 246.6 km an hour and wouldn't be beaten by the other two cars. The Hyundai did come extremely close though, running at 246.4 km an hour, creating a near enough dead heat between the two, but the three points for this challenge go to the Japanese manufacturer. For Audi, it wasn't off the pace by any means, but in this case it would go from 0 to 0, bringing up the rear at 244.8 km an hour. Going fast is one thing, but slowing down from that speed is another. Whilst at iRacing Super Speedway, the cars were tasked with braking from 230km an hour to a complete stop as quickly as they could. 
Whilst they can't stop bouncing around more than a pogo stick injected with red cordial, the Honda Civic Type R could come to a stop quicker than the chasing pack, narrowly beating the Audi and convincingly beating the Hyundai. The Honda is incredible on the brakes and it just makes you wonder how good this car could be around the flatter circuits with minimal kerbs. So with only one challenge left, could Honda make the comeback of dreams and win the balanced performance comparison? Could this be the ultimate ascent up the leaderboard to snatch victory at the final moment? No, not with that acceleration I can't. Whilst the Honda has excellent initial traction, the car does suffer from the turbo lag at lower speeds, with the turbo working in the high RPM range. I'll wait patiently for the VTEC jokes. The Hyundai on the other hand was actually initially slower in the 0 to 60 range, but came back very well to reach 100 kilometers an hour over a tenth and a half quicker than the Civic and two tenths quicker to 160. Those precious tenths of a second in the 60 kilometers an hour and above range for the Hyundai could prove game changing on a rolling start against the Civic. Both of these cars use a regular racing sequential gearbox, meaning you rely a lot on the clutch to modulate your initial launch. The Audi RS3, on the other hand, uses a DSG gearbox where there is no clutch at all, meaning your entire start is managed with your accelerator. But that doesn't account all by itself for the fact that the Audi accelerates quicker than any other car by two and a half tenths from a standing start. It wasn't even close. The Audi was leaps and bounds ahead of the other two. The car has finished accelerating to 160 km an hour four tenths quicker than its competitors. Sure, a DSG gearbox is far less consistent and is easy to mess the startup with, but if you get the launch correct, this Audi will act as a rocket ship in comparison to the other two. The Audi is the tried and tested TCR car of the bunch as it has been around for years at this point. It is worth noting that the extra experience that I have in the car compared to the other two may have had some impact in the lap time challenge just from a comfort point of view, but this Audi is quick. The Honda and Hyundai might be shiny and exciting as they are brand new for this season, but do not count out the old dog for a second. This car has still got it.